On this week's weekly video fishing forecast, Fisherman Senior Editor Fred Galifaro has information on the work that we've done on the Montauk rock face, including adding fishing access. I will be continuing my rod building series and a few reports around the island from our correspondents, all here at thenewfisherman.com. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. I heard from News 12 meteorologist Rich Von Owen this morning. He said the next few weeks look like they'll be tough ones with lots of wind and cold temperatures. Ice fishing may be the only game in town for a while. Speaking of which, West Sunday I fished some safe ice in Suffolk County with ice angle and Matt Perch. We used tungsten flies tipped through wax worms. All right, so we're out here fishing. We're getting set up to ice fish. We're just using, we're gonna do some jigging for panfish today. So we got a couple nice light jigging rods, very light line, two pound test. And as you can see, very sensitive because when you're ice fishing fish are very lethargic they don't really hit too hard so you need a sensitive tip like this because when you're jigging what you'll do is like you'll see we have a flasher down here we'll show you that momentarily and then um basically what's gonna happen is you'll see your jig on the screen and then you'll see a fish go and start working your jig and what we usually do is we'll dead stick it we'll just stop jigging and wait for the you'll see, you won't feel the bite you'll just see the rod tip move or you'll see there's a little bit of load in the rod they'll do sometimes what's called an up bite so what'll happen is especially crappies do this they'll hit the jig and then you'll see the load come out of the rod and then that's when you set your hook and fight the fish ironically ice fishing is more of a video game than fishing when using electronics to keep your eye on the action you can actually see the fish below and the trick is to give them the right jigging action to entice these lethargic panfish remember don't take any chances when going out on the ice unless you have a minimum of four inches of ice and looking ahead, we may not have those conditions until next week. Please use extreme caution with this type of fishing. Cook on the card for a recent Fishery Magazine article, Ice Fishing 101. In case you missed it, last week, New Jersey and Delaware Managing Editor Jim Hutchinson did a live seminar on the subject of fishing for striped bass under the new circle hook regulations. He showed the workarounds for traditional J-hook rigging but using circle hooks to conform to the new regs. He also answered questions from viewers who watched the broadcast live. Check this video's description for the link or click on the card in the top right. Speaking of circle hooks, this just in from Toby Lipinski, the New England editor, who has been monitoring the ASMFC Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission meeting to see if there will be any changes to the circle hook regs regarding subjects like tipping with products like pork rind, which is considered bait. But we all know it's just an attractant that gives more action to the lures like jigs. Toby? Well, I just finished sitting through some, I don't know, what time is it here? Five hours of uh, a web-based meeting with the Atlantic State Marine Fisheries Commission, specifically the Striped Bass Management Board. Actually, both Jim Hutchinson and I were sitting in on this meeting, attending, uh, and as far as I could tell from the meeting attendee list, we were the only media, fishing-related or otherwise, to be in attendance on this meeting. So. As you would expect from the Fisherman Magazine, this is a Fisherman Magazine exclusive breaking news item for you. Uh, so we announced last week, uh, uh, in, earlier this week in the E! News letter that the Striped Bass Board was going to be discussing several topics this week. Uh, they met at 1.45 Wednesday afternoon. The first hour or so, they addressed a handful of other agenda items, but it was somewhere around that 315 range where they really touched upon or began discussing what we were most interested in at this point in time. Uh, and that is circle hooks, bait, and striped bass. And it was uh, uh, the discussion began by addressing the proposal, which was presented by the states of Massachusetts and Maine, for the tube and worm jig. That's, that's right, tube and worm jig, not something I'm terribly familiar with in my striped bass fishing, but that's that's how it was referred to by the board member. Um, anyway, they got onto the subject discussing the viability of circle hooks on the tube and worm rig uh, with a sandworm attached, uh, eventually being that the motion was, uh, or the proposal was brought about by Massachusetts and Maine, the state sitting in between them. New Hampshire was uh, um, questioned on to how their thoughts were on it, being that they were going to be sandwiched potentially in between these regulations. And they expressed extreme opposition uh, uh, to the proposal for, uh, among other reasons, because the New Hampshire representative has a gear item in mind that could be commercially sold to produce the circle hooks uh, on, on the tube and worm rigs, but I guess that's a subject for another day. 
Um, eventually, the discussion continued. No other gear types were addressed with the proposal. That means the bucktail jig, the eel skin rig, um, uh, rigged eels, stuff like that was not addressed in this proposal. Eventually, a uh, motion was made to accept the proposal, uh, uh, which also added in a study to be initiated by a committee to be formed shortly, um, which would, over a two-year span, study the circle hook or J-hook deep hooking uh, idea concept on the tube and worm. And in this two-year span, anglers would be allowed to use the tube and worm, worm rig without a circle hook, which means a standard tube and worm rig, J-hook, sandworm deal is was being proposed, and eventually it passed. The only two states that were in opposition of this proposal was uh, New Hampshire, as we noted earlier, and the state of New York. So the motion passed, so officially this weekend, as of this week, for the next two years anyway, you do not need a circle hook on a tube and worm rig when you attach some sort of natural bait to the end of it. Uh, this further led to a subsequent motion or, or modification of the motion to develop, let me read the words here, a definition of bait that would require the use of circle hooks by March of 2021, intended to lead to, by definition, the exemption of certain scenarios from the circle hook requirement and clarify those scenarios which would require a circle hook. Subsequently, it was modified, it passed uh, uh, unanimously, it was subsequently modified to include the, um, the wording of as soon as possible uh, in the event that they're able to get it done sooner or if it takes them a little bit longer. And additionally, the motion was amended to include um, incidental catches, such as, let's just say, for example, if you're targeting bluefish, fluke, sea bass, what have you, and you happen to catch a striped bass, but you were using a J-hook. So hopefully some clarification will come of that. Are you allowed to keep the fish under that scenario? Do you have to release it? Are you, is it illegal to harvest the fish at that time? So hopefully coming out of this, we're going to have some sort of clarification again to that as well. Sort of all leads back to the earlier issue, the oversight by the board back in the fall. But nonetheless, we have at least one answer for you here going forward officially. Tube and worm rigs. Bare minimum for the next two years, do not require a circle hook when you attach bait to them. Of course, as this story develops and additional hearings and motions and proposals, etc. are uh, uh, become known, we're going to pass that information along to you. But until then, be sure to stay tuned to The Fisherman Magazine and thefisherman.com. While we're on the subject of circle hooks, The Fisherman Magazine is giving away a circle hook sample pack of Gamagatsu hooks, fish bites, and a gator all for subscribing or renewing your subscription. Act now while supplies last. Now, let's check in with Captain Timothy O'Rourke from Montauk. Thank you, Matt. Well, as everybody figured out this week, we are in the throes of winter. There was no denying that fact this week. One good note is we're one more week closer to springtime, so more people will be able to get out and go fishing. On a brighter note this week, on Sunday, the Viking was able to get out and do some cod fishing both the Five Star, captained by Steven Jr., and the Starship, captained by Carl Jr., were out. Um, the Starship did pretty good. They had fish up to 25 pounds. They are sailing this Saturday and this Sunday. Reservations are highly recommended and required. Uh, they also said that if weather permits, they'll be adding trips accordingly. So check out their website. Uh, you can probably get an alert if you sign up for one, and then uh, you can feed your winter itch. Little Steven on the five star, he did pretty good. He was out Sunday on a charter. There were 10 guys on the boat and they had just under 40 fish. Um, he said he picked away pretty solid in the morning and then kind of had to bop around and, and find a couple fish here and there. But all in all, it was worth getting out. So everybody uh, look at the website, check them out. Maybe you want to get your uh, fishing itch satisfied and have a good weekend. Thanks. And with more news from Mod Talk, we also have Fred. Thanks, Matt. And yeah, last week we spoke about a couple of new access areas for 2021. Well, there's another project getting underway this spring. That's the Montauk Reventment. Uh, unfortunately, it's going to be two years down the road before it's completed. It's long awaited. Uh, finally, they got everything in order and it's going to start ideally by March, but definitely again this spring. So this $30 million project is being funded by the state and feds. It's going to involve rearranging existing rocks, but also bring in a lot of new boulders 
and uh, the nice part for fishermen is there's going to be construction of a lower level specifically for fishing. It's going to be t 10 feet above sea level. There'll be another level above that, 20 feet above sea level uh, for tourists, anyone who walks around the base of the lighthouse. Uh, unfortunately, access to the front of the light or up front, as it's often referred to, is going to be off limits during construction for obvious reasons. But Tom Des, who manages the Montauk State Park system, uh, did tell me that access will be maintained to Turtle Cove. So, uh, again, this is uh, a really nice benefit, going to make for easy access under the light and allow a lot of people that normally can't fish under there uh, to enjoy some of the benefits uh, that this area has to offer. Uh, Matt, i got to tell you, there's also going to be some people that are not very happy with that easy access. Uh, uh, some people like it the way it is, but hey, what's good for one is good for all. Back to you, Matt. With our flying freshwater report, we have Paul McCain from River Bay Outfitters. Hello, Matt. Well, I was ready to go fishing. My friends backed out. I don't understand it. Look at this. It's beautiful out. Well, in reality, it is not the time to be outside on the roads. But this is a good thing because now we're building up water in the ground for the spring fishery. It should be good. Uh, also, but up to now, the Spring Creeks have been fishing very well. Of course, the Connect Quad is always doing well. The ponds are starting to freeze up with a little warm weather. The pickerel fishing is going to take off. Crappies are going to start moving into the shallows. Anyway, we got to. Anyway, we hope to be doing some fishing in a few weeks. I'm going to Connecticut hopefully next week. So until then, tight lines, everybody. From the Fire Island area in Great South Bay, let's check in with Captain Al Lorenzetti. Hey, Matt. Fire Island fishing report. Not much to report other than some white perch around Argyle uh, Lake in, in uh, Babylon by the falls in the basin and on the opposite side as well. Uh, I think the Taco Bell Creek is pretty much frozen up. There's a couple of holes in there. Maybe you might pull a couple of fish out of there. But uh, that's pretty much all I hear that's going on right now. So it's kind of slow, waiting for this ice to break up. Uh, so, you know, that's it. You do what you can do during a tough time of the year. Looking forward to the new season. And I'm going to be producing a video on how to use circle hooks, which everybody's going to have to use next year, fishing any kind of bait for striped bass. So that's it for the week, Matt. Take care. Because you asked for it, here's my next installment from the Rod Building and Repair series. We're we'll demonstrating here how to put trim bands on your guide wraps. There would be the little, in this case, silver thread in front of the actual guide wrap. It's really straightforward. You need the same tools. It's just one extra step as opposed to wrapping a regular guide. So just watch along and I'm going to talk you guys through it. So first thing we're going to do is take our guide here. Same step as wrapping a guide. Make sure your rod is straight with the reel seat lining up with the guide. Take our guide. Tape it on the blank. All right, that's all done. So a little different from wrapping a regular guide, the first step we're gonna do here, instead of going with the black thread, is we're going to go with the silver thread. So here's what we're gonna do. First, we're gonna find where we want that band to start. Okay, so I want this wrap to be an inch and a quarter. Okay, so I have an idea of where it's going to be. Keep that ruler in handy. Take a little piece of tape like that. Now we're going to take our silver thread first. Tape to the back side. Okay, now we're going to spin it down the blank. I think we're coming up on that inch and a quarter mark. Okay. And that's an inch and a quarter right there from the bend of the foot. Okay. So we're going to spin the same way we put like black thread on for regular guide wrap. Go over it and we're going to do a three, um, three band here. So one, two, three. Okay. So that's three wraps over the, um, the, the point where we go over the uh, the original thread. We take off our tape. 
unwrap this, keep it nice and tight with the other hand just so nothing comes undone. Okay, and we have this little excess right here. What I'm gonna do with that is, I'm just going to trim that off. Okay, so we have our band in place. Now we're just gonna wrap this way, go back on top of itself, so it locks it in one, two times. So now that's locked in, that trim band. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take another piece of tape, a little bigger, just like that, and we're gonna tape over that silver thread. The tape, come on the bottom, snip, spin, and that's in place. All right, so our trim band's in place. Next step is pretty straightforward. Um, take another piece of tape. We're gonna take our black thread now. Again, tape to the back side of the guide. We're gonna spin. Now this is where we lock in that silver thread. Go over the silver. Right about there we wanna cross. We're gonna go, keep going, keep going. Make sure it goes over that silver band, back over the black band. One. Two. Three times. Okay, so that's locked in. We're gonna undo our black thread. Undo our silver thread. Now, here's what I like to do to make sure that the um, the silver thread doesn't peek through on the actual guide wrap. What I'll do is, if you, if you see right here, let me see if I can get it up for you guys. This silver still peeks through on the black. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my silver thread, pull it a little bit, push it together, pull it until it disappears. Uh, we're almost there. And there we go. So now it's just pure silver, nothing peeking through. Nice and clean wrap. Make sure everything's nice and tight. One more wrap, we'll go around, make sure everything's nice and looks good. All right, so now everything's perfect. Now at this point, we're gonna trim away our silver, our spin, and we're gonna trim away our black thread. At this point, it's really straightforward. You just wanna keep wrapping like a regular guide. Again, go slow up the foot. Make sure it transitions nice and smoothly. At this point we can unwrap our guide with the tape. Proceed. mistake back off if you do make a mistake and you want to back off just make sure you keep you unspool back onto the your um thread spool And at this point, we're gonna to wanna to put in our ending thread, which would be this one right here. Double it in half, put it on the back side. And we're gonna wrap about an eighth of an inch. All right, that's about good. Pinch it down, snip. Black thread goes through this loop. Tighten it up. Take a little razor blade, as close as we can get.
and that's it. There you go, guys. Make sure everything is nice and tight. And there you have it. That's how you put a trim band on a guide. Remember to like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and tap on the bell to be notified instantly when we post a new video on YouTube. Check out this week's video description on YouTube for all the related links and information. And please support our correspondents by visiting their websites and social media pages. The latest issue of The Fisherman Magazine is out now. Stay warm by the fire and enjoy the February issue. See you all right here next week at the theallnewfisherman.com. Steigercraft boats built by people who fish our waters. Serious anglers choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.